is about domes and globes, and I've worked out four different kinds. The most simple, not really satisfactory, is this type. This is covered in Tutorial 13, curved shapes, and so that's a sort of rough approximation of a dome. It's definitely the easiest. The second type is this. It's really two open top shapes on top of each other. Tutorial 18 is called open top shapes, and so this is the underneath, and then you can stick this on top of it, and it still has a gap, and so then you can go to tutorial 21, pyramids, and you can adjust this to make a top, or you can adjust this to make a top. And it could be in a future tutorial, I'll go into that in more detail so you can make a really slick one of those. There's a nice example here of it being used to make a dome. This is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Paper Engineering by Ian Smith, and it's got a very nice dome in it. Here, this is an open top shape with another one on top of it, and then it's one of these pyramid shapes on top of that. It's broken down into 12 segments, so these two stick down and it's got two, 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 two. The way he makes it overlap nicely is that this is the piece that shows, and then it's got these flaps that stick up underneath the next level. So that's how he's got it to all fit together really nicely, whereas, in this one, you can see there's big gaps, so that's how that's fitted in. This is another of my early experiments from a few years back. This is some sort of globe on top of a box. Well, I've prepared to make one here, so it's a whole series of these that are, are folded in half and they stick on each side to little circles, and I will make this in a minute. There are a couple of examples of something sort of similar. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Robert Sabuda. This is held up on a string. It does have these little pointy bits that are supposed to fit in between each segment that help to keep it all in shape. The idea is good, but somehow if it was only just pulling a bit harder, I think that would be a really great model. There's another example of something, again, sort of similar in this. This is uh, Cinderella by Matthew Reinhardt. And that's this Cinderella's coach. And again, he's got some sort of complicated structure inside. But again, these are segments that aren't joined to each other. This is type 3. So here's type 3. This is the base. These are all the pieces. I've made these. Let me separate this out. So each of these, the angle at the sharp end is 24 degrees. Here's the uh, protractor. You put it on the line and this comes to 24 degrees. You can measure the other side. So having made that 24 degrees, the sides are six and a half centimeters along the straight side. You can then put the compass point on here and you measure that length. And to get the other end, you make a little arc there and then put it on the other end and make another arc the other way. And that will give you the other point. So you can make 11 or 12 of these. There's two circles. And then I'll just glue together this box shape these are the pieces. So you need two of these. They're seven centimeters long, one and a quarter, seven centimeters long, and then it's, it's just a tab on each end. And it's two and a half centimeters wide. And it's double, so we're making it double thickness because we want the whole thing to be pretty strong because it's going to be lifting up the globe. So I'll just glue those two together. So that's double thickness and that's double thickness. And there's two of these. And these are designed to fold up to make 
just complete parallelograms. They were blue like that. Put some blue on the end there. And glue that shut so that gives you a parallelogram and the same on this side and these are going to glue onto the base like this this is the beginning of a box shape and there's actually a long piece this piece is eight by two and a half this is going to come up between these two so I'll stick these to the base first so you put some glue on the bottom of it, stick that to the base, stick the other one to the base, and then this piece that's eight centimeters long, this is going to go between those and just stick up a little bit. Now we can put glue on both these sides here and here. Put this between those two and shut it. So now I'm actually going to shut the whole thing to try and make the gluing sound. This is the box. This is um, two parallelograms. So this is an unstable structure. The box is tutorial 14. So we stick this across on the two outer edges, this is what locks the whole thing into position and makes it into a solid box. That has now made it a rigid shape that won't rock. And just to reinforce that, I'll do another one on the other side of it. Right, so this is the basic box. Then we want it to jut out on each side to lift up this, this globe. So here we are, we'll make two more of these parallelogram shapes. Again, the dimension of this, it's two and a half wide. I'm going to make it double thickness. So this is two and a half as well. And then the length of it is four, one, four. And then the, the tabs on the end are one as well. And again, I'll just fold this quite thoroughly and then glue these down, make these folds as well. And glue this side down as well. I'll just flatten it to try and make it as sturdy as possible. And this all folds into a parallelogram. So I put glue on the end there. So these stick on here and here to hold the globe. I'll put the glue on the upright and on the top. I might as well do the other one at the same time really. So that all goes in like that. I'll just close it and make sure it's all going to do what it's supposed to. Yeah, there we are. So you've got the total diameter is eight. Or, well, you know, the total length is eight. And then you've got these two and a half centimetres diameter so you set the compass on one and a quarter and you stick one of these on each end now you can start sticking these on but when I look at this one it it looks as though I actually scored all the way around halfway up each triangle but I don't think that really works and I I don't think it's really necessary I think ideally you could just stick the points on and it would just curve nicely. It will end up bending in the middle, so you might as well make that crease and then start sticking. So I put a little bit of glue on the two points. Oh, I've got too much glue there. This, this uh, tube has got an air bubble in it, so when you squeeze it, you compress the air and it keeps on keeps on oozing so I'm going to stand it up on end so the air bubble rises to the top and then I can squeeze from the bottom and squeeze out the air um, while I just stick this piece on so put it to the middle of the circle put this one to the middle of the circle uh, 
hopefully that's good just fold a couple of these while I let that air bubble rise up the tube let's just check this now so having had it standing on end the air bubble should have risen to the top so now you can squeeze it very gently from the bottom and, and squeeze the air out and so then when you start using the glue it won't it won't go on oozing when you stop pressing so put a bit of glue on there and there right stick the next one on uh, we've had a little break while I just did the fiddly bit of sticking all this on. And now I've got down to the last two pieces. So I need to cut some away so that the piece will look like this. So that when I stick it on, it can accommodate the tower. If you look at this one, you can see how the bits underneath have been cut away to accommodate the tower. When I look at it, I also see that one of these pieces joining the two sides of the tower, the bits I stuck on, to, I said it was to lock the tower in shape. I think I've actually made them a bit too big. So I made them about two and a half centimetres deep. I think just one centimetre would have been better because if you look, as it closes, you can see this is going to actually clash with the uh, yellow piece. So I'm going to cut away a bit of that as well as cutting gaps in these these last two uh, sections so they can they can fit in around that tower piece so this is one right, and then I'm going to cut away a little piece of this link bit on the tower. Maybe the scissors will do the job. That's it. So now you can see with that piece gone, as it closes, it's not going to clash with these yellow pieces. So now I can just stick the last two yellow pieces on. Also, I said 11 or 12. This one is made with 11 yellow sections. In this case, I had cut out 12, but while the cameras were off, I, I made one extra piece. So this is actually 13. Uh, there we go. Let's see if it will work. And the last piece. Not too bad. I think if you want to make one of your own, you need to maybe practice, maybe take a little more time and care, but basically not too bad. It is quite an interesting pop-up in its own right. <laughs>